Hey, welcome back. I'm Sid. So I'm sure you must have come across this situation when your images look fine when you're editing in Photoshop and then suddenly becomes dull when you upload it on Instagram or your website. Let me show you with this image here. The retouching is already done and I'm going to apply a quick color grade using one of the Palette Express Pro LUTs. So if I go to Profiles and in Cine Fashion, this is the 60s look, the 70s, the 90s, Teal Hollywood is a bit too much. Annie Sian works for this image, just what I want. Now I can reduce or even increase the intensity of this LUT. So let's click OK. So this is the original and this is the final color graded look ready for exporting to Instagram or your website. So let's go to File and Save As. And by the way, you can also choose to export as for JPEGs. For now, I'll use Save As and choose JPEG as the file format and then click OK. Now let's find that file and as soon as I open this new copy, the colors are completely different from the original. Now there's an easy fix for this, but first we need to understand what is happening with the colors. So anything that has to do with representing color in any app or digital camera, printer or monitor boils down to something called the color profile. Now color profiles and color space are two different things as I've explained in this video linked above. And you absolutely must watch this video to clearly understand this along with the different type of RGB images. So in the color spaces video, we saw that raw images don't have any color space. It is just raw data. A color space has to be assigned to a raw image during the raw conversion. So what a raw converter does is it tags the color space by embedding a color profile in its metadata. So you can think of a color profile as a simple text with information about color coordinates of that color space. And where do you find these color profiles in Photoshop? Right here in the edit menu. To check or alter your color management preferences in Photoshop, go to edit and below you will find color settings, assign profile and convert to profile. And at a glance, they all sound similar and confusing. But I guarantee you, by the end of this video, you will understand it perfectly. So let's start with color settings. The first thing you see is the workspace. This is where you decide what is Photoshop's default working color space. So for RGB, I have set to sRGB as a default. I could set it to Adobe RGB or even Pro Photo RGB. So what does this setting mean? If I open any image, will it always open in sRGB? Unfortunately, the answer is not that straightforward and has many users confused over the years. So pay attention to this. Once you set the working color space, in this case to sRGB for RGB images, then it will not be the only color space Photoshop works in with your images. Unless you have this color management policy set to convert to working RGB. The color management policy section by default is set to preserve embedded profiles and ideally you should not change these settings. Once you set Photoshop to preserve embedded profiles, which you must, Photoshop will open all those files that were saved or exported as Adobe RGB or Pro Photo RGB in their respective embedded color space and not convert them to sRGB. So you must be thinking, right? What is the point of setting the working space with preserve embedded profiles if Photoshop will disregard whatever we set? And that is a very good question. The reason for this setting is because Photoshop will always use the original color profile that was assigned to the image unless there isn't any. And in this case, when a color profile is missing or untagged from the metadata of the image, Photoshop will assign this working space profile which we have set here as sRGB. And when does the profile go missing? Now remember that the color profile is basically text in the metadata and it can get overwritten or untagged. And this usually happens when you scan an image or download an image from the internet that has not been saved properly. And the reason why we set it to sRGB is because it is the preferred color profile for all viewing devices and chances are the missing color profile was most likely an sRGB. And similarly, these would be the default CMYK or grayscale profiles if those files had a missing profile. So this entire workspace section will be used for one and only one thing. That is to open an image without any color profile assigned to it. Now with these checkboxes, you can decide whether you want Photoshop to open up an alert dialog box asking you if you want to change these default settings every time you do one of these tasks of opening or pasting a file. 
The ask when pasting checkbox for profile mismatches is the only setting you cannot set here in color settings and so can be useful for you to decide later during pasting or dragging and dropping between the images having different color profiles. So that is the only one I keep checked. You may choose to select the ask when opening checkbox but then every time you open an adobe rgb or pro photo rgb image photoshop will display a profile mismatch alert and then provide the same options for handling the color of that file. Since we always want to work in the original embedded color profile it is best to unselect this option as it really slows down the workflow. And same applies to ask when opening checkbox for missing profile. Since we have already assigned the sRGB working space for missing profiles, there is no need to keep this checkbox selected. But if you prefer to get a warning about missing profile, you can keep this checkbox selected and when an image does not have a profile, Photoshop will ask you to assign a profile. Now on the right side we have the conversion options, but this is not the best place to set it as we are always going to override these settings depending on the task. And plus in the color management policies, we have not chosen to convert any profile, so these settings won't count. The only way you should convert a profile in Photoshop is by going to edit, convert to profile. But we'll get to that later. For now, let's get back to our image and see what's the problem and try to fix it. Now the easiest way to detect the color settings of a file is right in front of you. See this coded message on the top? For every image, Photoshop adds several helpful pieces of information in parentheses right after the name of the file you're editing. First comes the color mode. So if your image is an RGB, CMYK or lab, it will be shown up here. So even though our file is an RGB, it might not necessarily be the same RGB as you think. To find out exactly which RGB profile we are working on, I can go to the bottom info here and click on this arrow to set it to document profile. And this shows us that our image is a pro photo RGB image and has 8 bits per channel. So now we know what this RGB stands for. And this is followed by a slash and a number representing the bit depth of the image. So for 16 bit images it would show 16 here. Now what comes next is very helpful and important. You might have noticed that for many files there will be either an asterisk or two asterisks or a hashtag sign. And sometimes there is no punctuation mark at all. So what is the deal with this? Well, this is Photoshop's coded message to tell you if there is any mismatch in the working profile and the image profile. If you see an asterisk within the parentheses like in this image, it means that the image is in a color profile other than the default working space. Remember that we have set Photoshop's working space to sRGB but instead we are working on a pro photo RGB file and so it has an asterisk to let you know about the profile mismatch. And this isn't a bad thing at all. Photoshop is just letting you know about this situation. And if you don't see any asterisk inside the parenthesis, it means that the color profile is the same as the default working space color profile. So if I convert this image to sRGB, you can see that the asterisk inside parenthesis is gone, meaning our image is sRGB just like the working space. But now you have another asterisk outside the parenthesis. So what does this mean now? So when you're editing an image, you might get this asterisk outside the parenthesis. It means that you have modified or converted the profile but not saved it yet. So as soon as I save this image, the outside asterisk will vanish. Now, if instead you see a hashtag sign, like in this image with messed up colors, it means that your image has no color profile associated with it. So this is Photoshop's warning sign that the image is missing a profile. And check the info below. Instead of a color profile name, it says untagged. So the reason the colors have changed in this image is because Photoshop cannot color manage the image. It simply assumes that the image is sRGB. And if you remember, this assumption is a default setting that we set in edit, color settings and working space options. This is where we specified that all images with missing color profiles should be open as an sRGB. Now mind you, at this point Photoshop has not converted it to sRGB. The image is still untagged. We haven't chosen to convert anything here. Everything is set on preserve. So Photoshop is simply displaying it as an sRGB in its working space. And that's why what you see on screen does not accurately reflect what the image actually looks like. And to fix this, we simply need to tell Photoshop what the correct color profile is by tagging or in other words, assigning it to the image. And this is where assign profile comes in. So let's go to edit and assign profile. 
The first setting that you see should always be avoided, which is don't color manage. But in this case, it is already set to that because the color profile is missing in the first place. Now second is the working space for RGB documents, which we have set to sRGB. Now as soon as I'm going to choose this, the hashtag sign will disappear. Since this document will become an sRGB, which is the same as the working space color profile. But obviously this is not the correct profile as we know the colors are not right. So let's move on to assign profile with which we can set the image to any color profile that is saved on the computer. Now since we know that the original image was in Prophoto RGB before exporting, we know that is the profile that went missing. So as soon as I set to Prophoto RGB, the proper colors are back again. Also notice the asterisk now appears inside the parenthesis which simply tells us that Yes, this current profile is something different from the working space profile. And since we just assigned it, we know it is Pro Photo RGB and you can see that here below. So what does this tell you? It tells us that the proper colors were always there. They were just labeled with the wrong color values. And we fixed that by assigning the right profile, which had the original color values of the image. Now that we know how to fix this color issue, let's see what caused the missing profile in the first place. So when you're saving or exporting an image, you'll find this option, embed color profile. Always make sure that this is checked. This makes Photoshop save the color profile you were working in. If it is unchecked by accident and you don't notice it like I did in the beginning while saving it as a JPEG, then Photoshop doesn't tag the image and the color profile goes missing. And that's why the colors will look different. And this is just one way how to mess up the colors. Now, if you're working on Adobe RGB or Prophoto RGB like this image here, then during export, you need to decide where are you going to display it. If it is for the web, you will have to convert it to sRGB, which is the preferred color space of web display devices. So if I don't convert this Prophoto RGB to sRGB, the colors will again look inaccurate wherever I upload it. So how do we convert our image to sRGB without messing up the colors? Because if we go and assign the profile to sRGB, our colors will look bad again, like we were seeing in the sRGB workspace of Photoshop. So this is where convert to profile steps in. Now this may sound very similar to assign profile, but they do completely different things. While assign profile simply changes color profile tags by assigning the new profile as a label, convert to profile properly remaps the color values so that the new color space can preserve the look of the old color space. For example, if you remember the previous color space comparison video, the same 02550 green point value looks more saturated in Adobe RGB than in sRGB. So if the RGB values are not converted or remapped to the new color space, it alters the saturation resulting in a dull color. An assigned profile simply changes the label of the profile tag but keeps the RGB values the same. And as you can see the green color with the same RGB values looks different in Adobe RGB and in sRGB. So convert to profile on the other hand will actually convert the RGB values of the old color profile to the new color profile in order to maintain the look of your image. So if I go back to convert to profile and convert my main pro photo RGB image to sRGB you will see very little color alterations, if any at all. Also, keep in mind that assign profile only works within the same color model. You cannot assign an RGB profile to a CMYK image with assign profile, let alone convert it. You can only do that with convert to profile. And of course, this is what everyone wants, right? After color correcting your images, you wouldn't want the colors to be altered. So convert to profile is the ideal way to change the profile of your image. Even when you export as, which is very similar to save as, but mainly used for web compatible files like JPEG, PNG or GIFs. So if you work in Prophoto or Adobe RGB, you will see that you have this option to convert to sRGB right here. So if you're thinking if convert to profile is the ideal way to change color settings in your image, why would you ever use assign profile? Like we saw earlier, assign profile should only be used when your image has a missing or untagged profile. That's it. Now before we end, let's quickly try and understand what some of these convert to profile settings are. So the first thing on top shows you the source space which is the current color profile. The next option is where we select the destination color space to which we want to convert to. So you can choose Adobe RGB or even CMYK printing profiles. And when you outsource your printing or work with a magazine, they usually will have their printer's ICC profile sent over, which you can save to your computer and access it from right here to convert your final image for them to print. 
Next in the conversion options, you can choose which engine handles the conversion. So here we have Adobe Ace and an Apple version. And you might have something else on a Windows computer. So it's best to let Adobe color manage it. Now Intent lets you decide how Photoshop will render out of gamut or out of range colors. So perceptual means that it will try and make the out of gamut colors look something that looks pleasing or realistic. This should be used when converting from a wide gamut source like Prophoto RGB to a smaller one like sRGB or CMYK. Saturation is mainly for preserving rich saturation of converted images. And this option is better for graphic design. Now relative colorimetric which is the default option and is recommended for most users especially if you work in the sRGB color space. And finally the absolute colorimetric setting is not ideal for most conversions as it is mainly used for hard proofing colors that is when trying to get one printer to look like another. The black point compensation makes sure that the darkest black is converted correctly. So if your image has a really dark or clipped blacks then this option might reduce the overall contrast. But if your image is fine and has proper blacks to begin with, then this setting usually doesn't make much of a difference, so you can keep it checked. Finally, the Ditter option works only when your source is an 8-bit image. If we had a 16-bit image, it wouldn't be active. What this does is it mixes a bit of noise to help reduce the banding so the colors blend a bit smoothly. I know I have bombarded you with a lot of information and it might help you to save this video in your list. And while you're at it, please do subscribe and ring the bell to be notified for the next video. Until then, take care.